Trenton, 365. With Jacques Howard. Profiling the businesses, organizations, and people that make Trenton better. Friend, and welcome to another edition of the Trenton 365 Show. I'm your host, Jacques Howard. You can follow us on Twitter at Trenton365, Facebook Trenton365 Show. And if you're listening, it's over WIMG 1300, the oldest radio station in the state of New Jersey, the website, WIMG1300.com, and also on Twitter, WIMG1300. And if you're watching, it's over WPHY covering, covering Mercer County, New Jersey, through uh, Channel 25 WPHY. In the studio with me is author and artist, Rashad Malik Davis. I'm going to make sure I get it right. A little tongue tongue tied there. So um, I met Rashad through uh, Eric Thomas, who many of you are familiar with through Regis Entertainment and our affiliations with bringing lots of jazz music uh, to, back to this region. And uh, he said, "Jock, you've got to get this amazing young man in. He's an amazing author. He's a great guy, and he's doing some awesome things." So. I looked at his website, of course, which is RamalikIllustrations.com. We'll be referring to that quite a bit later on in the show. And then I said, you know, I'm overwhelmed. I said, this is exactly what I'm looking for. We need to get this young man in and so that he can get some more exposure. And without any further ado, Rashad Malik Davis, welcome to the Trenton 365 show. Uh, thank you very much. I'm so grateful to be here. <laughs> that's, that's awesome. So uh, let's get right into talking about who you are, um, sure. a little background history, and then I want you to dive right into RamalikIllustrations.com because I was a bit blown away by the website, sure, all sure. the different materials and the offerings that are there, and plus the video snippet that you have posted as well. Sure, sure. So again, my full name is Rashad Malik Davis. Um, I'm an author illustrator uh, working on his first uh, self-published children's book um, that's both illustrated and written uh, by me. So. Mm -hmm. um, um, as far as background goes, I studied at Tufts University undergrad um, and went to went on to pursue my graduate degree in animation at the Savannah College of Art and Design. Um, and you know, I it wasn't until my senior year of college though that I finally decided, you know, I need to pursue my passions and this is what I need to uh, kind of commit my life to. And um, you know, from then on, it's just been an upward kind of movement of discovering my own talents, um, discovering a lot about myself in the process, and really just um, figuring out what gifts I have that I can bring to the world and to mm -hmm. the community around me. Mm -hmm. And we're going to get into some details talking about the satisfying of your soul, your spiritual development, et cetera. For sure. But um, this region, where, where are you born and where did you go to school, et cetera? Uh, sure, sure. So I was actually born in Staten Island, New York, uh, but around the age of nine or ten, I decided, well, my mother decided <laughs> uh, to move to uh, Lawrenceville, New Jersey, and I've been here for about 17 years now, mm -hmm. or 18 actually. Yeah, about 18 years now. <laughs> um, and your other question was? Um, where and where did you go to school? Oh, right, right. So uh, for middle school, uh, well, actually for elementary school up through middle school, um, I studied at um, Slackwood Elementary and then went on to Lawrence Middle School. And then for high school, because my mother saw that there was a dearth of um, attention, um, or she felt a Saw, felt and saw that there was a dearth of attention paid to the black students um, and to the black community within um, that school district. Um, she wanted me to go instead to uh, St. Peter's Prep in Jersey City, mm -hmm. uh, which is where I spent high school. Mm -hmm. Now, St. Peter's Prep has a very good reputation, not only for the academics, but also for the athletics yeah. there as well. <laughs> right, and are right. you athletically inclined? You know, um... <laughs> <laughs> You weren't in that line I was, when God was doing the creation. You were in the artistic line. Exactly. Just completely I, I understand. That sometimes they're they're like A and Z, and sometimes I, I get that perspective. Um, so um, I want to talk a little bit about um, your your mother sure. taking that initiative and recognizing that hey, you know what, my child's not getting the type of education that I feel they should. Right. And uh, right. took the steps to say hey, you know what. I'm going to look for something else. Can you just touch briefly about your mom and her support and uh, oh, yeah. and the kind of woman that she is? Oh, for sure, for sure. You know, my mother has been my best friend, um, you know, for as long as I can remember. And uh, it's been her support. Um, and I, I've, I've lived with both my mother and my aunt. So, you know, equally they have been um, very uh, tremendous for my growth and for my... Um, and, and, and the support of my own artistic career. Mm -hmm. um, and so my mother, you know, she's always been very adamant about me um, visualizing the best. And, and, and you know, I, I realized uh, after the fact that she herself was very spiritual, but 
wasn't um, saying verbatim the things that I was feeling um, or just using the terminology that I believed in, but she was uh, espousing the things that I believed in in terms of um, having a positive vision of yourself um, and sticking with that and really manifesting the kind of world that you want to be in. Mm -hmm. And so she was very adamant about me being, no, you're going to have the best. You're going to be in the best because you are the best. And that was kind of the mindset that she instilled in me very early. And that's kind of stuck with me uh, since and ha has kind of gotten me through the tougher moments <laughs> of my artistic career. But, uh, you know, she was she was very instrumental in that. Mm -hmm. And we're going to talk a, a lot about the support um, that you receive, not only from your family, mm -hmm. but also from the other people in your life, such as Eric Thomas. Yes. Who took that step in initiative and said, Jacques, you have to meet this young man. Right. So I, Eternally I, grateful. Yeah. It, <laughs> <laughs> sure thing. And I'm, and I'm sure Eric is listening, so shout out to Eric. Um, that is exactly what I believe culturally has been lacking right. here um, in the United States, is that we don't have enough people outwardly speaking up and supporting the efforts of others um, who may not be doing the same thing that they're doing. Right. You know, almost giving right. credit um, to, to the people who are doing things that are outside of the box. Right. Um, and I say that because I spend a lot of time with the artistic segment of our population, whether it's someone who's an artist and they're, and they're a performing artist, right. or they're a visual artist, or like yourself, a digital artist. I, I find that a lot of times the ones that are successful and mm -hmm. the ones that I bring onto the show, they all have that same thing in common. They have family and friends who are behind them and supporting them 100%, right. constantly edifying them. Right. So just talk a bit about how important that is for you. Oh yeah, no, it, it's crucial. And it's interesting that you mentioned that because I'm, I'm reading a book right now um, by an author that I had the great pleasure of meeting by the name of Maladoma Patrice Somme. Um, and what he is, he's, an, he's actually an African shaman who talks about his experiences um, as, a, as a healer um, with, you know, within the traditional African context and um, as a shaman. And he talks about the fact that people are able to flourish within his village and within his community because of the uh, support of mentors in particular um, and how a mentor comes in because they're, they're basically guided to you by spirit um, as someone who has gone through the things that you've struggled with. Um, the things that you, um, the things that you need in your life at that moment, they they are always the person to kind of uh, supply you with that, mm -hmm. and I think that's kind of an extension of community. And I, um, I'm always so grateful for the people that just kind of you know pop up <laughs> randomly in my life um, at just the right time when I need them, and I, I'm always grateful for that. Mm -hmm. That's like a saying I heard a while back that everyone needs a Peter, a Paul, and a Timothy, mm -hmm. someone who's walking with them, someone they're mentoring, and someone who's mentoring them. Right, right, and I currently am mentoring someone now, right? <laughs> so, so it's, it's, it's working out. It's working out. <laughs> awesome. So, so Rashad Malik Davis, before we get into a lot of uh, meat and potatoes about who you are sure. as a person and what you're doing with uh, your ar art as well as your books, sure. share your contact information, please. Uh, sure. So um, if you want to reach me via, uh, via my website, that's going to be www.ramalik, R-A-M-A-L-I-K, illustrations.com. Um, if you want to contact me via email, it's the same thing, illustrations at gmail.com. Um, and those are my two primary forms of contact. I do have an Instagram and um, a Tumblr as well with the same name. So it's, it's all linked uh, with RamaLeagueIllustrations.com and Twitter as well. Mm, awesome. <laughs> and all the links as well as the audio from this interview will be up on the Trenton 365 Show Facebook page and tweet it out later on tonight as well. So you'll be able to get a copy of that and share it liberally. Um, when did you learn that you loved creating, you loved art? You know, that that was something that I just kind of, <laughs> my mother jokes, she's like, you popped out the womb with that one, you know? Um, it was something that I, as long as I can remember, just always gravitated towards. Mm -hmm. um, it was always within me to have these worlds in my head. Um, I, I, I was always thinking and I was always imagining um, these places that were magical, fantastic, and always putting it down. Um, and, you know, it, it took a while for my skill set to kind of match up with the visions that I had in my head, uh, but eventually it did. Um, and it's it's something that I've uh, kind of cherished for as long as I can remember. Um, but it, it wasn't really until my senior year of college, um, maybe a year, a year or two after that, when I, I kind of had to take that leap and say, you know, I can be comfortable and I can have um, a job that 
you know, is financially stable, it's, it makes logical sense, but in my heart, it's not, it's, it's not fulfilling me. It's not making me happy. I, I don't wake up being like, ah, yes, let me go sit at this desk, <laughs> you know? Um, and it wasn't until then that I really decided that creative work um, was my modality of healing um, and was my modality of really giving back and, and helping and reaching people. Mm -hmm. Well, I'd, I'd like to drill down on that a little bit. That's taking me off of uh, my, my list here. But the healing aspect mm -hmm. of it, um, you know, when I create art, yeah. you know, I create stuff for myself. Right. Um, right. Because it's visually st uh, stimulating to me. Um, I'm getting an emotion out or it's something that I'm feeling. So to right. me, my art is therapy. Mm -hmm. And I know that there are therapists out there who work in the medium of art. But I'd like for you to talk about it like during your personal healing process. Sure, sure. So um, for me, the, the healing aspect comes uh, as a result of making myself visible. And, and what I mean by that is for a long time I struggled with finding people who look like me, who had um, at least in entertainment. Um, I, had a, I had a hard time finding people who look like me. I had a hard time finding people who I resonated with in terms of their worldview. Um, and really, my principle can just be boiled down to love. Um, and I, I had a hard time really finding that um, within media. And so the healing for me comes when I'm able to say, okay, I'm... And w one of my really good friends, by the name of Talia, hey Talia, <laughs> uh, she gave me a really good quote. She said, um, art should uh, art is often um, kind of a looking glass but it should be a mirror where you can kind of see yourself reflected back and I was like whoa that that really just kind of encapsulates everything um, that my work is about is making sure that um, there's some aspect in my work of me being reflected but also of the people that I want to serve mm. mm -hmm. and, and I loved where this interview is going because it's 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 flowing nicely mm. and and i'm able I, i'm one of those people i like to jump all over the place <laughs> right. and and so but but you're taking me in a nice direction mm -hmm. because i do want to talk about the importance of um being able to identify with characters in books that we read and in illustrations and so especially crucial. when you're a young person right being able to identify with characters who look like you have the same issues right. or not issues but go through the same life experiences that you do and to be able to identify and I'm glad that you're that you're creating these books can you just drill down on that a bit more sure sure so um you know I think the first time that I ever saw a black person in a cartoon was Bay Bay's Kids. <laughs> and, you know, I, I loved that movie. Um, but then as I got older, I realized how problematic a lot of those images that I was being fed were. And I mean, it was great animation. It was it was a lot of fun. But as an adult who's um, conscious of how images affect us, um, I was able to see like a lot of this wasn't um, reflecting my reality and it wasn't necessarily reflecting um, back to me what I wanted to see in myself. And so, you know, as I grew up, I, I, I tried to identify with like Japanese culture for a long time because I couldn't find myself. Um, I was very into anime. I was very into um, basically any Japanese import that I can get my hands on. And it was, you know, it was on it was on me to really recreate that. Uh, but it wasn't until one day I was kind of like, I'm kind of tired of drawing Japanese people. I want to draw somebody who looks like me mm -hmm. because that makes the most sense. Um, and as I've gotten older, I've, I've, I've started to gravitate more towards literature, um, you know, with black heroes, with um, black heroines. And, you know, and beyond that, I, I like to also look at people who are different from me because that's kind of the, the value of entertainment and literature for me and the arts is that you're able to kind of take a look at somebody else's world and empathize with them. Um, and that's why this book for me was so important because I was like, I was seeing so much going on in the world uh, that I wanted to heal, but I was like, how can I reach people and how can I make them see that we have this shared um, common humanity with, you know, between all of us, but doing it in a way that's not preachy, that's not like overly, you know, bearing down on people. How, how can I do this in a fun way? And that's kind of where this led me to. Mm -hmm. And that's fantastic because I think that for many years, especially here on the East Coast, mm -hmm. um, you know, in between New York and Philadelphia, um, the idea has, has been often shared mm -hmm. that if you're too progressive supporting your own ethnicity, mm -hmm. then you're considered militant right. or threatening right. to a lot of people. Right. And, and it's nice to see that 
times are changing rapidly mm -hmm. and that there's another generation. I mean, you're an adult man. You're, you're creating opportunities for the next two and three generations behind to uh, have those characters who are interested in the same things they are. Like mm -hmm. you mentioned, anime. Right. And being able to talk about life experiences, but without it being in a context of wanting to revolt or cause harm. Right. Or, or being a separatist or segregationist. So thank you for that. Of course. And uh, I'd, I'd like you to talk about um, the premise of your book. Yes, sir. Um, and I know oftentimes uh, the creative people have a tendency to have these ideas and they're percolating for a very long time. Right. And then right. it's it's almost like an epiphany. Something happens and then it like clicks and then it comes out and then the world is astounded and they say, <laughs> where, did, where did all of this come from? And that's when you say, well, I've been in my basement or I've been in my study or I've been writing this down for 20 plus years, et cetera. Can you talk about your personal experience and your process? Uh, definitely. Um, so with with this book in particular, like like you said, it just kind of you know hit me over the head one day, uh, where I said I need to do this. But um, what really planted the seed in me was unfortunately um, the killing murder of Tamir Rice, mm -hmm. and um, you know I I named the main character of this book Amir in honor of him. I, I mean I, I don't publicize that because I don't want it to you know make it seem as if I'm you know profiting off of somebody's mm -hmm. death. But mm -hmm. um, it hit me so profoundly. I it, I saw the image of. Um, Tamir Rice and then saw it juxtaposed with um, Emmett Till and you know for a day I was kind of numb to it but then finally the next day I just kind of broke down in tears I was like this is not normal um, how history repeats itself and I, it, to me as a spiritual person um, seeing someone who looks so much like someone who was murdered uh, was kind of like the ancestor saying this is happening again we need to really concretely put a stop to this Mm -hmm. And so that was the impetus, really, for me to come up with a story. And that's how I got Amir's name. Uh, but as far as the idea for the story goes, uh, literally one day I was sitting on my couch with my um, mother or my best friend. I can't remember who it was with. Maybe both. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but the idea just kind of hit me from out of the clear blue sky. I, heard, I, I saw in my head two best friends. Um, I heard chakras in my head, and then I heard, you know, adventure. And I was like, okay, I guess I'll just go with it and, um, and kind of move from there. And that's really how I got, I got my started with it. It's just, you know, a div I guess divine inspiration just hit me one day and I went along with it. <laughs> mm -hmm. and, and, and I'm glad you said divine inspiration because I think a lot of times people, especially people who are uh, faith centered, right. we have a tendency of, of saying that, no, you know, God is working in this and oh, God yeah. is working in my life and it was divinely inspired because of this. Right. So I want to encourage you to continue to say that and to continue to use that. Thank you. Speak the truth. You know, if that's what you really feel has happened to you and this is where you are and it's, and it's uh, showing itself through the rewards and the abundance of it and, and the teaching that's coming with it. Call it what it is. Uh, yeah, right, because, right. Because if, if we read in, in scriptures and we believe in a spirituality and a faith base, why would we think that all of a sudden a time has come where it stopped? Exactly. So if exactly. it hasn't stopped, then that means either I'm not looking for it or I'm not recognizing it. That's it. it. That's so it. I encourage you again to keep going with that. Um, you alluded to Talia. Yes. A little bit <laughs> earlier. And, um, and uh, hi, Talia. And um, I'd like for you to talk about your friendship yeah. um, with her and how that kind of evolved into your book. Yeah, so um, Talia, Talia herself, she is a one, of, you know, one of my best friends. Um, the book itself is based on both me and my best friend, Nina. So um, Talia has been, uh, you know, has been around with both Nina and I for as long as I can remember. And we've it's been, it's been interesting. I've watched kind of friends fade away and, and some friends melt away and, it, and that's, you know, that's life. Um, but with Talia and Nina and, and I, it, our trajectory has always been kind of the same and we, we've always had the same passions. It's always been creative. Um, with all of us, it's been writing, um, some to some degree of visual arts, but it's always kind of been the same trajectory. And um, Talia herself, again, she, she was very crucial within the editing process as well, um, but it was Nina really who uh, was the impetus, again, uh, to, get this, to get the story going because she and I have been friends for so, uh, literally as soon as I got to uh, New Jersey, uh, we bonded over the fact that we both liked Pokemon and had uh, purple Game Boys. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, she's been my best friend since forever um, and really inspired me to, to get this going. So uh, this whole project is just love-based. It's like, you know, how can I spread this love that I have um, and that people give me into the world and give it back? 
Mm-hmm. And then I want you to stay with that. I mean, that trifecta friendship that you mm-hmm. have and how it's evolved over the years. I mean, like I would assume when you were talking to me earlier that you're under 30. Right. Yes. Okay. <laughs> 25. So, so, so you've, you guys have been friends for, you know, a couple of decades now, basically. Yes. And, um, and your relationship and your friendship has evolved. Can you talk about the importance of having someone who you've grown up with, mm-hmm. who's known you since you were a child and adolescent and now an adult? How how that helps you in this process sure so you know having it's interesting because we all have um, like I said moved in the same trajectory and we've all somehow moved into kind of social activism um, and you know doing healing work in the best ways that we know how and again it's for all of us it's writing um, and additionally for me it's um, through visual arts and through music but it's it's been really wonderful to have two people who share the same vision as you um, kind of help guide you along the way because even j- just based on regular conversations that we have every day just about identity um, you know race any everything um, it, it's, it's been in, it, incredibly instrumental in me building the world um, building these characters and you know I, I've never said this to them but you know their friendship has really guided every aspect of this story so mm-hmm. it's, it's been really important. <laughs> well, you've already said it. You, yeah. you just said it to them to them now. So that's fantastic. Um, so uh, Malik or Rashad, yes. Malik, please give the contact information again. Folks, I'm going to drill this home <laughs> because I think it's very important. We're going to be moving super fast through this. I think it's very important for you to take some time, go to the website, reach out to Rashad, and, and get a chance to meet him um, yourself personally. Sure. I don't bite. <laughs> uh, my website, again, is www dot ramalik illustrations dot com um, my instagram handle is the same uh, ramalik illustrations tumblr is ramalik illustrations and my twitter is my full name which is rashad malik davis awesome mm-hmm. now we've got just a couple of minutes before we're up on a on a, on a short break mm-hmm. but i'd like for you to take us into that sure. break and uh, just talk a little bit about your book i mean you mentioned that the chakras yes and the idea behind it so uh, what is your book about briefly uh, sure sure so briefly it's about um, in a nutshell, two best friends who are basically charged with uh, balancing the spirit world. <laughs> uh, so they essentially um, are bored. Their best friends have done everything under the sun, basically. And uh, the boy who um, is just frustrated, he runs home and he says, Dad, I have no clue what to do. So the dad, who's, a, who's kind of a, a yogi and a shaman, gives him a magical amulet and says, go have fun. There's a place you haven't explored yet. And so the magical amulet takes them, kind of Jumanji style, into um, into this new world where they meet these heroes that are based on the chakras. Um, and the chakra system is a spiritual system, and I can explain that momentarily, but um, the kids are charged with balancing them and the chakras have to deal with emotional states and so the kids use their emotional intelligence and their emotional literacy skills to essentially heal this new world Mm, that's fantastic we're going to drill down on that in just uh after a short break awesome folks i I alluded to say this earlier that uh 2017 is upon us and i'd like to say happy new year to everyone who is in the listening and viewing audience and to put a charge to you um 2016 is beyond us um it is now time for us to recognize that we've got one chance and one shot at this life that we have and uh, where we are and i encourage you all to step out in faith get involved in the game in some capacity and do what you can to build this community and to build the world that you really want not only for yourself but also for your grandchildren and your great grandchildren we have the opportunity like no other time in history to be global media magnets and to be able to share our life and our experiences with whomever we can i encourage you to do that And we'll be back after a short break. You're listening and watching the Trenton 365 show. And I'm your host, Jacques Howard. Here's George Foreman with InventHelp. Hi, I'm George Foreman. Do you have an idea for a new product or invention? People ask me all the time, George, how do I get my idea in front of companies? How do I get a patent? What do I do next? Do you have the same questions? I'll tell you like I'll tell them all. Call my friends at InventHelp. Call InventHelp today for free information. InventHelp has been helping inventors for more than 30 years and has sales offices nationwide. InventHelp can submit your invention to companies who are interested in receiving new ideas. 
is. If you have an idea and want to try to patent it and submit it to companies, you should call InventHelp today for free information. Listen, I can't guarantee a company will be interested in your idea, but I believe every inventor deserves the opportunity to step into the ring and take their best shot. Put InventHelp in your corner. Call now, 800-974-3927. 800-974-3927. That's 800-974-3927. I wasn't prepared to be a caregiver to mom. I had no idea how hard it would be and what I would need to know. Things I never thought of, like how to improve her mood and ways for me to stay positive. Luckily, I found the Caregiving Resource Center from AARP. It had articles about the basics, but also information about the hurdles I was facing. Caregiving Resource Center at aarp.org slash caregiving. Articles, tips, and tools to help you both care for your loved one and care for yourself. Brought to you by AARP and the Ad Council. Oh, 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 O'Reilly. Restore your vehicle's lost power by cleaning your entire fuel system with Chevron Tecron Fuel System Cleaner. Right now, buy one bottle, get one free at O'Reilly Auto Parts. Keep your engine clean and improve performance with Chevron Tecron Fuel System Cleaner. Buy one, get one free at O'Reilly Auto Parts. Better parts, better prices every day. Limit supply. See store for details. Oh, 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 O'Reilly Auto Parts. <laughs> And welcome back to the Trenton 365 Show. You can find us on Facebook, Trenton 365 Show. The website, Trenton365.com. And on Twitter, at Trenton365. You're listening and watching over WIMG 1300, the oldest radio station in the state of New Jersey, and the two-time stellar award-winning station as well. And back to what I was saying earlier, folks. Again, Happy New Year. And uh, it behooves us uh, for us to create the world that we want, not only for ourselves and for our families, but also for the children who are alive and for our other offspring, our great and our great great grandchildren so i encourage you to get into the game if you're having some struggles or difficulties with that i know there's plenty of people wherever you are but i'm willing to do that as well so just hit me up via email trenton 365 show at gmail.com or you can find me through social media i'd love to have a conversation with you preferably over food and then we can talk about some other things from there about how we can build this community and the world for everyone excellent all right, so uh, in the studio with me is Rashad Malik Davis, and Rashad Malik Davis is a digital artist, but he's also an author, and uh, he's got his new, or his first book has just been released, and he's got some information to share about that, and we've been talking about lots of different things, about his background, what the premise is behind his book, and uh, in short, and I'm glad he put it out this way, it's about love, L-O-V-E, that magical, powerful word, love, in all of its different realms, whether it's the intimacy kind, or it's the friendship kind, or if it's the parental kind. And, uh, and I'm glad that Malik is here through the reference of Eric Thomas, a friend of mine through Regis Entertainment. So um, Rashad Malik Davis, share the contact yes. information one more time, and then we're going to talk more about your book. For sure. So again, the website is www.ramalikillustrations.com. Uh, the Instagram handle is Ramalik Illustrations. Uh, as well as a Tumblr and my Instagram, I'm sorry, my Twitter is going to be Rashad Malik Davis, my full name. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Now, uh, earlier we were talking um, before we came on the show in our green room, mm -hmm. and we were talking about your spiritual development and how this has helped you on this path. And uh, it's obviously something spiritual that you're bringing out. Can you talk about that a bit? Uh, sure, sure. So my spiritual journey <laughs> has been uh, pretty intense. Um, it, it came about as a result of meeting some people who are not so good. You know, you unfortunately, we all meet some people who are not so good. Um, and a lot of people seem to go through the most dramatic change when they are going through a traumatic experience. And uh, for me, that, that was that. And, um, you know, it, it wasn't until then that I really developed a, a, a kind of relationship with spirituality. Um, and I, I'm glad that you said uh, to kind of push me along in the direction of talking about spirituality, um, because unfortunately, I feel like in our culture, there's no room for it um, or it's or it's kind of shunned when you have an actual relationship uh, with spirituality so um, for me I was kind of propelled and pushed into um, developing certain gifts so for instance I was uh, being guided via dreams uh, to you know to 
go back to school, for instance. I was being guided via dreams um, and visions of see seeing things before they happen and then having them happen. Um, I was being guided through that way. And so it wasn't until um, maybe my, it was the summer of 2014, I believe, um, that I had a dream, essentially, where I was walking through the city and this uh, building exploded. And I said, oh my God, I have to protect myself. So I ran into um, a restaurant to kind of protect myself from whatever was coming. And I saw in the smoke that blew by the number 1557. And I didn't understand, you know, at, at the time what that was, but I decided to look it up. And at the time I was kind of contemplating whether or not I should go to, uh, go back to school, pursue my education, um, and pursue a future in art. Because it was, you know, everybody's like, oh, you're not going to be able to, you know, afford anything. You're going to, you know, die alone and hungry. So it's like, okay, well, <laughs> how can I move forward? Um, and I decided to look up that number just kind of on a whim, and I broke down in tears. Uh, the number... Um, spiritually was in reference to higher learning. It said, um, now is a time of formal education, learning, and study. And if you don't take this opportunity, you might not get it again. And so I was like, whoa, <laughs> let me do this. And so I just kept getting berated with more numbers like that, kind of guiding me step by step with what to do. And eventually, um, one day, I just kind of, again, with the, uh, with the words popping into my head, I heard the word SCAD. Like, oh, okay, let me look it up. And it was the number three animation school in the U.S. And I said, okay, I'm being guided here. Let me go ahead and apply. And I applied and I got in. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm currently finishing up a few more classes uh, for my animation major. Uh, but other than that, you know, it's, it's always been um, from the summer of 2014, it's been kind of guided. I've been guided uh, very strongly, uh, very clearly on what to do and how to move forward. So. Mm -hmm. And I'm glad you share that story. And I didn't know that. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, you know, it, it, it actually um, humbles me and stimulates me, almost moves me to tears. Mm -hmm. Because, again, as, as I mentioned earlier, we have a tendency to want to put other people in a box and including ourselves in a box. Right. And if we are people who are spiritual people, which is, I mean, I think all of us understand that we are, mm -hmm. we are in no position to limit the movement of the spirit, right? whether you want to say God or Ja or Ra, how can we limit that power? Exactly, exactly. So being able to articulate that 1557 through a dream talks about formal education and mm -hmm. study. Right. And then SCED, S-K-E-D. Yes, S-C-A-D. S-C-A-D. Yep. For you to be able to see that, and then to recognize and take the steps mm -hmm. to understand that that is an animation school. Right. Which ties in with what you're already doing. Exactly. It's almost like God has left the breadcrumbs <laughs> for you. <laughs> right. And literally, if you don't follow those, then um, and, and let me back up because I, I say this all the time when I'm speaking publicly. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be that guy that had an opportunity to do something right but for whatever reason didn't do it exactly whether i was scared or i listened to someone say i shouldn't do it i'm beyond that right when i'm putting things out i'm putting them